Winning the Delano Pole Award for the series' annual visit to Darlington is Leonid Roderick in the number four Aperture Science Volpe. On the outside of the front row, Arto Kekka and car number nine, the winner here last year, neither has won yet this year. Savaral Endeavor, a former teammates in row two. Pliskin in car 16, and Rossini, the Coriolo winner in row three. Klaveno has won twice this year. Scott Bates won in Germany. Dav Davenport has not won yet this year, but Dwyer has won in Sweden. Cooper and Card, welcome back Jacob Card, and Zach Webster makes a series debut. Tony Durbin is back, the 07 Drivers' Champion. Joe Lennick, a good qualifying effort there. Stan Holland, the best looking car in the field with Dan Leckletter and the Manicore Boys in row 11. Row 12, you see Tom Delgado is back, the American Devil. Disappointing qualifying effort for Moxel Andershun. He was looking for more than that. Henton, Raketa, Nasova, Taub. I think all of them got about what they were expecting in qualifying. Archer Harris is looking for a little bit more than starting 31st. Ashley Tucker makes her series debut in car 98. And here we come to the usual suspects at the back of the field. The Tutino boys in row 18. Tom Moore, Dan McKay, Azuma Kazuyama, and Anthony Griffith. Zelda Ashby crashed in, in qualifying because Nietzsche was given a grid penalty. And Garth McAllister Jr. in car 24 is the only non-qualifier. McAllister Jr. crashed in practice and he was not medically cleared to drive. Here is Tom Moore in car 19. He will not take part in this race because that car blew up on the warm-up lap. So Tom Moore, after smoke was coming out of his Lycoya, we've already gotten uh, down to 41 cars. Leonid Roderick gets a pretty good jump up the line, but Adrian Devereaux forcing it already. He got a great start as Luciano Savarol flubbed it. And Devereaux cuts from the outside of row two to the inside going for second. I think he wants the lead. Adrian Devereaux, car number seven, not shy to hustle his way to the front as quickly as possible. Enid Roderick moves to the outside, surrendering the low line to Devereaux. I wonder now. Roderick has not has uh, done quite a bit of running in um, in traffic in practice, and Roderick certainly knows that you save fuel in traffic uh, a lot easier than you do when you're out in front by yourself. Uh, Roderick now going behind his teammate Rossini. So Roderick has gone backwards, but it kind of looks intentional. Because car number four looks like he's just going to ride around for a bit. And here is Tony Durbin, the 07 TM Master Cup Series Drivers Champion as Ian Cooper hits the wall. But uh, Tony Durbin is back with his uh, ASCC team, Tony Durbin Motorsports, which didn't exist eight months ago. Uh, Tony Durbin has run three of the six races in the ASCC this season. Uh, he has two wins in that short time. This is the same chassis he actually qualified at Indianapolis with, so... Uh, Tony Durbin is making a big splash in his uh, comeback of sorts, you might say. He's been looking to run this team for more races than just this. Tom Delgado, the co-owner of Delgado DeGarmo Enterprises, or DeGarmo Delgado Enterprises, depending on which side of the hall or for that team you look at. Uh, Delgado in that 37 car uh, has been quicker than both of his regular drivers all, all weekend long. Makes you wonder where all the good equipment's going in that team, but uh, oh, Delgado uh, gets a pretty good run around the Lecklider there, and he's having a march forwards, along with Gaspar de Souza, who's going around debutante Zach Webster, although Webster did run the Cariola Consolation race, if I'm not mistaken. This is his first actual uh, points race in car number 32. Webster having a great debut so far. Kakin it now. Sizing up Adrian Devereaux, it looks like Devereaux running a little bit higher towards the wall. And you, might, you may notice that despite how wide this track is, the racing line, very, very narrow. Because as you can see right there, the banking is significantly different uh, right on the outside where the racing line is and everywhere else. But you'll no I've also noticed that everyone that uh, uh, was running in front of Chris Davenport after the first lap has kind of just uh, ran away from the rest of the field. Chris Davenport has actually been bogging down literally the rest of the field because it doesn't look like his car has the race pace as the cars around him. Looking back at Anthony Griffith and Benoit Vuclair. Griffith, the 07 car. Oh, whoa, whoa, I was just going to say, Griffith, the Tenere factory driver, did not get as good a qualifying effort as he wanted, and Anthony Griffith's lack of patience clearly showing there as he just plows right into the back of Benoit Vuclair, the Frenchman. And I don't think that was called for at all. We're not even 10 laps in, and Anthony Griffith has already put somebody into the wall. But he has really hurt his own cars. Adrian Devereaux and Arto Kekkonen swap the lead. Devereaux now back to position one, as the Finn is going to have to drop the second. But look at Rossini really bearing down on Devereaux and Kekkonen. A Cariola winner, Rossini, 
really wants an oval win as Anthony Griffith is already being lapped. We are. Uh, this is on lap number 11. So this is uh, not looking to be the uh, good night for Anthony Griffith, uh, even by his standards. As uh, well, he's being a, he's being courteous, if nothing else. This is we're on board with Kevin Dwyer, who is the last car uh, in this sort of lead group. And there you see off the rear off the rear bumper. Now Chris Davenport, after the first couple of laps, got himself up into eighth, and you and you can see it is a huge gap between Kevin Dwyer and uh, the cars behind him which is Jacob Card in car number six and his teammate Luciano Savarol. Now Jacob Card is back after those undisclosed medical conditions that he was having uh, uh, during practice for the round of Russia that led him to be uh, not medically cleared for that race or the race afterwards. Paul Lyons substituted in this car and did very, very well. In fact, Paul Lyons is about as many points as Card does this season. And uh, Luciano Savarol is running right behind, uh, J uh, running a little ways behind Jacob Card. Actually, that's actually Chris Johans right behind Jacob Card. Those cars are a little bit similar in coloration. Um, although we think we'll see Luciano Savarol in a slightly different paint job uh, for the next couple of races. It'll be that black livery he ran earlier in the year. So we're looking at Chris Davenport running in 13th, doing a hatchet job on Greg Woodard and. Yulina Sova's opening stints of the race, but Davenport's racing them for position, and he is not going to give up at all. I've seen Davenport uh, rather crash than back off, and and if uh, anyone had actually seen Chris Davenport, I don't think they would uh, they would associate him with um, a uh, never give up type of driver. Not since Ian Cooper have we seen this level of defensive driving and such a willingness to do a hatchet job on everyone else's race regardless of how much it's going to help you. But here, he's, Yulina Sova in the 10 is going to finally get around the 84. And speaking of Ian Cooper, he, after hitting the wall with his uh, brand new livery to Allison Becker car, the 777 entry has gone all the way back to 33rd position. Well, for someone who started on the pole here once about 10 years ago, it's not exactly how he'd... Um, uh, whoa, Cameron Taylor a bit slow. I wonder if he got into the wall a little bit. But Ian Cooper and the old Darlington Stripe. Oh, Ashby has not made any progress to the field at all. Uh, Ian Cooper not having a good run either. Uh, but that 55 of... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Archer Harris just got checked into the wall by Joe Olenek. Now, there was something we didn't see there. Because Joe Olenek was actually... Uh, and Archer Harris were running a lot higher than this. Earlier in the race is Matthias Taub and Ian Cooper make contact. Um, but there was something we missed there because that looked... That was pretty obviously intentional for Melenic as we've got problems with the 39 of Brandon LaRoe. Looks like a cut tire, and good job by Cameron Taylor to not pile into the back of the 39 car. It looks like a cut tire on LaRoe's car, and that's not where he wants to have it. He's going to go several laps down. The leaders now are lapping Ben Atkins. This is not an unusual sight. Uh, ben Atkins getting lapped, or Tutino being lapped for that matter, but given that Ben Atkins is the only Tutino left in the race, um, well... And also, they're lapping Peter Short, the four-time world champion in the uh, rather hapless Vernstrom. Uh, I mentioned that the Vernstroms are having a, having a pretty good weekend here so far. Clearly that they have no race pace whatsoever. Uh, makes you wonder all the money there is going. As Alessandro Rossini and Leonid Rotter continue to prove that there are no team orders at Volpe. Uh, these two guys are racing each other probably harder than any other two teammates out there. But they have uh, nothing but the highest respect for each other off the racetrack. Um, Rossini in car three, Roderick in car four, both still legitimate threats for the championship. Rossini entered this race as the championship leader, as we're now looking at Adrian Devereaux in car seven. He, uh, well, he uh, was leading the race a little while ago. Kakinen has the lead now. His teammate, Melanie Klaveno, uh, is right behind him. Now, Devereaux and Klaveno are the only repeat winners this year. And there you see Ian Cooper on the outside. Even though he has been known to be one of the uh, biggest roadblocks in the series, uh, he is one of the most polite lap cars, uh, paradoxically, as you see Melanie Klaveno a bit uh, passive about getting by him. Now that's something that we've noticed from Melanie Klaveno a lot, is she's very, very timid in traffic, and that is uh, clearly the case here, as she's going to probably lose third. As Zelda Ashby in the 55, who is in the top 10 in the championship, is about to be lapped by Arto Kakinen and Adrian Devereaux. And, oh, Kakinen makes a bold move as Ashby tries to hold on to the lead lap, but Adrian Devereaux 
I don't think wanted to stick his nose in there and possibly tear his race car up. Ashby in the 55 is having a awful night, to say the least. But that's, uh, that should uh, tell you how much uh, how important track position is here because not only that, but uh, the, amount of, uh, the amount of ground Chris Davenport has cost so many people in the opening stint as Melanie Clavino is boxed behind Cameron Taylor. Clavino again probably could have cut to the inside and gotten around Taylor a little bit uh, soon. Ooh, I think be Cameron Taylor pulled a block on Kevin Dwyer, but I think realized his mistake and moved back up in front of Clavino's car. So I think there's probably a little bit much going on behind the wheel of that 26 car. That car does not necessarily look like it's a, it's a uh, oh, Taylor, big, big push there. Mel yeah, Melanie Clavin, I think, was uh, needed to get around him as soon as possible because Cameron Taylor's car look, did not look like it was handling very well at all. And a ill-handling car around Darlington is going to be a long night for you indeed as Arto Kekin loses the lead to Adrian Devereaux. And there's another man having a long night, Matthias Taub. Dan McKay, by his standards, is having a pretty good race there in that 95 car. Devereaux, uh, oh, Dan McKay. Now, I remember when I said that there's uh, that a lot of the back mark some back markers, like Ian Cooper and such, were being uh, relatively nice tonight, looks like. Dan McKay is usually the opposite uh, in that 95 car. He did take out the leader at Road, at Road Atlanta. Joe Olenica wants to stay in the lead lap, but we, uh, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Devereaux did not appreciate being held up by Olenek. And puts Olenek in the wall, but the yellow's already out. So, I want uh, Devereaux shakes his fist at Olenek. Now, here's what happened there. See, so the yellow's already out. There's an incident on the front straight we'll get into. But Devereaux just goes straight to the back of the 23, and I think tried to take him out. Because uh, I don't think Devereaux appreciated being held up. And you see, he's also not very happy with Dan McKay either. So, um, well... Anyways, looking at Azuma Kazuyama, the Japanese driver driving for Maximus. Whoa! He just came on the back of um, Ashby, and Cameron Taylor got involved with that. Kurt Pliskin, I think, got some damage in the 16 car. Kazuyama pull it, pulls it back on the racing line. It's getting it back up to speed. And, uh, oh, whoa, 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 whoa! Brandon LaRoe into the back. And, oh, Scott Stoidler and Yulina Sova collected. Now, I think we may know where that cut tire from the 39 car came from. I have a feeling it was due to one A. Kazuyama. And that's certainly what some of the radio chatter that we are hearing is implying. Uh, that, uh, not only that, but Brandon LaRoe will probably be visiting the stewards. Just about a lap before that yellow came out, Packer Carroll was given a black flag because there is uh, reports of smoke in the back of that car. Or at the very least, something that doesn't necessarily look good. And looks like Packer Carroll. Yep, they're pulling the 18 behind the wall. Packer Carroll's night is over. Very disappointing for Packer, who has really been improving this year. Now we're looking at Brandon LaRoe, who is um, several, several laps down after that cut tire, which uh, we believe was from contact with, uh, with Azuma Kazuyama. Leonid Roderick is the race leader in car number four, but you'll notice he's mired back in traffic. It looks like the pace car picked up the lead, picked up the field at the wrong time, and um, well, normally this happens a lot at the short tracks where you'll see the leader not maybe not necessarily restarting at the head of the line when the field gets the restart. Uh, it's a problem we didn't think we'd have here at a uh, mile plus speedway such as Darlington, but clearly that's the case here. I don't think Roderick is terribly impressed about having to start. Um, this far down in um, in line, I think you'd rather be at the front, especially on a speedway, and especially uh, here because, well, he's got oh, he's got two Tinos around him. He's got Chris Davenport in front of him. A lot of slow cars to the inside of him that are that are over a lap down um, for various reasons. Uh, but yeah, this is going to be a very interesting restart as the field gets the green and she and you see the running order on the left side. Roderick is, um, there's going to be a lot of cars at the tail end of the lead lap are going to be bolting away from the field as soon as they possibly can. Leading that line is Luciano Savarola in car number five. As you see, Roderick now trying to now who, see if anyone's going to the inside line. You may have noticed Melanie Clavino is a couple of laps down. Clavino had a very long pit stop to have the hood up on car number two. So, um... Uh, Clavino is already dropped, uh, no she hasn't, looks like, looks like she stayed behind her teammate. Online for the most part. Uh, anyways, 
Roderick now trying to find a way to the inside as soon as he can. And, um, or rather, to try to get there before Arto Kakinen or Rossini gets down there, even Andershun. So here we, here we now we're looking a bit. Uh, now here's the whole field coming coming through. Roderick and Ah Kakinen's gonna get by. He's got it. Found a hole behind uh, Peter Short's Vernstrom. Peter Short not exactly with a uh, car, with the, that Vernstrom not exactly the fastest piece of machinery around here. As Arto Kakinen is going to go, trying to get on by the 22 car. Roderick boxed in behind Ben Atkins, who's trying to get back on the lead lap, I do believe. Our lead, uh, and uh, there's there's Tony Durbin up ahead in car 56, who we, we understand had some pit lane contact with uh, somebody else. We're not quite sure with who. We believe it was the 47 car. And here is Matthias Taub, or uh, here is, I know, that's actually Kevin Dwyer in the back. Uh, my mistake, they're both yellow cars. I'm looking at it from far away as we're looking at Alessandro Rossini in car number three. As he's on the inside of Archer Harris in the uh, 79, that uh, sort of tangerine orange 79 car. Harris gives Rossini plenty of room. The Cariola winner is really hunting down his teammate now. And Arto Kekin for the race lead. Anderson several is a couple laps down in the 74 car. I don't know why he restarted on the outside line then. Because that's um, a bit of a puzzling mistake for a race control to put to put, to uh, tell the 74 to be on the outside when clearly he he wasn't on the lead lap. Well, this is a, this is getting to be a bit of a mess already as Chris Johans in the 12 is making it brown on Kevin Dwyer in the 8, and here's Melanie Clavino in car number two. As I mentioned before, she has had some problems with this car, and uh, she's already brought it into the pits again, and. Uh, Apparently there's been more drama with Melanie Clavino's car. Apparently they didn't fill, fill it up with fuel all the way. So this is going to be a long night for Melanie. Now here is you have Jenny Kuznetsov, who started last because he was given a penalty after the round of Wales. Uh, Kuznetsov in this 15 car, however, uh, has really benefited from all the early uh, all the early drama. Stayed out of it and is now up to 12, chasing down Luciano Savarol in car number five, but. This could be a big night for Kuznetsov, who's uh, been driving very, very well lately. Uh, Wales aside. Kekinen now stuck behind the two uh, Gessler-powered Lynx cars. Uh, the, of course, the uh, two Lynx, uh, the Lynx cars have the uh, same engine in them that's in Arto Kekinen's car. Now, you do wonder whether or not uh, that partnership between Lynx and the uh, Carl Richter-owned Gessler team is going to... Uh, sort of grow in the future. There's been reports that uh, that the, the car that Arto Kekkonen is driving this year is going to be the car that's good, that the Lynx girls are going to drive next year. And uh, especially because, uh, well, the Lycoya Brute that Brandon LaRoe and Tom Moore are driving is actually last year's Lycoya Brute, we do believe. So, oh boy, this brings up the whole customer car headache again and it sort of makes you wonder whether or not having every team Every full-time team make their own car is worth the trouble. As we've got one car slowing, it looks like Carlos Raquetta. It's a red car. Can't really make out who it is. Uh, Roderick, though, got jammed up in that mess. And uh, Gaspar D'Souza and Adrian Devereaux went right on by. As Roderick is trying to get by, uh, looks like the Sovin. Yes, Carlos Raquetta. Car number 14, the young Colum the very talented Colombian, is having uh, problems already. And uh, Gaspar D'Souza and Adrian Devereaux about to do battle uh, for second place. And Gaspar D'Souza, this, in this number two car, or in this uh, second place car, rather. Um, what is wrong with me tonight? Um, anyways, Gaspar D'Souza used to drive for Honda's Walter Racing. Got his, uh, came up through the Colton Morrell Driver Development Program, much like Adrian Devereaux did. There were some reports that D'Souza might be rejoining Honda's Walter Racing as... Zach Webster gets another Darlington Stripe. And here's the prettiest car in the field, uh, Stan Hull in the 09, the one goal racing entry. Hull is running in across the line. I do believe he was 25th. Points go down to 20th. Stan Hull has been very fast in um, every one of his very limited appearances. And, um, well, I think uh, Stan Hull is really looking at that Independence Trophy and he wants it bad, and he's doing everything right to get it. He's setting up the 84 of Davenport, and um, we'll see uh, 
how well Hall does throughout the rest of the evening as Luciano Savarol in car number five is about to go a lap down. He's running 10th. Savarol off the lead lap. The Lenards have not really been handling very well around here at Darlington, but they've had a little bit of problems on all the ovals generally. So, um, if, uh, looks like Luciano Savarol and co. are going to really need to uh, kind of uh, improve their pace here on the high-speed ovals. As the EFR boys doing battle for 21st, Oxalander Shinpeo pokes his nose and he wants to position. Oh, no, 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 that wasn't, that didn't work. That was a little ambitious by the 74. And Ian Cooper and Scott Bates both into the wall, and there's a lot of damage on the 88 car. Ashby and Atkins involved as well. Here's the overhead view. And you see Ian Cooper and Scott Bates could have made it too wide through here. Cooper's pulling low. There goes the 74, who's already there. And there's really not enough room to make that three wide coming, um, uh, make it that three wide move work. So it was a little too ambitious, I think, on Axel Anderson's part. Uh, that being said, uh, not exactly what Scott Bates or Ian Cooper was hoping for from tonight. And a lot of damage on that 88 car. And Bates, unfortunately, is going to have to retire from the race. As Arto Kakinen, car number 9, is restarting as the race leader. You see the running order there. Much more sane restart here. Lewis Kingston in the 17, the first car on the inside, gets a very good jump off the line. Very good jump off the line. Kakinen very slow off the restart. Luciano savarol has got a second life, it looks like. Savarol is bolting into the distance. Adrian Davros got Stoidler. Oh, I saw the 7 swerve over into the 13. Rossini's involved. Jacob Card is and uh, Kevin Dwyer, I think, were having their own accident. Almost. Now, there's a lot that just happened right there. And uh, uh, Adrian Devereaux is not exactly endearing himself to too many people, I don't think, tonight. And um, Yulina Sova's got a lot of damage on her car as well, car number 10. Now, we're looking at the overhead camera. As Adrian Devereaux moves over into the 13, he's trying to get to the bottom and shoves Stoidler onto the apron. There you see, just, there, there you see, though, that just it was not going to work at all. I don't know what Adrian thought he was doing. But you may have noticed also that Jacob Carr had hooked the left rear of Kevin Dwyer and nearly made that a very, very dangerous situation. And um, Kessler is already calling for a penalty. It's Carlos Ricetta in car 14. His night has gone from bad to worse. And that's, well, Ricetta was, they were planning on, Katza was uh, intending on parking that car and it went up in smoke literally as he was pulling back into his pit box. Convenient. As you see here, Roderick is the leader. Savarol and Kingston on the tail end of the lead lap. Uh, because when the yellow came out, they had to rush all the way back around and back into the pit lane and uh, didn't make up um, all that ground just under the yellow. A little bit, uh, little bit uh, hard for me to explain, perhaps, but uh, be that as it may, Roderick is the race leader. He's trying to work his way around. Oh, looks like Kingston slipped up in, this, in the 17 car, and yes, it was. There you see Roderick now trying to put Savarol back a lap down. Savarol hoping for another yellow. Oh, Roderick puts a slide job on Savarol and gets right on by the Brazilian. Roderick now has got a fair bit of a gap between himself and the second place car. As um, Roderick now beginning to put uh, try to put a lap back on Davina Henton in the 11. And oh, Henton not making his life terribly easy. And I don't think Roderick is going to appreciate that very much. Arto Kekkonen on that lap on hit it actually under that yellow and uh, uh, Kekkonen in the 9 car is all the way at the back of the line and where did all that damage in the back of the 12 car come from? Hmm. I think Chris Johans in that 12 car, he's still in the lead lap, still for running competitive lap times. So by the way I need to give a bit more of a shout out to Chris Johans for having one of his best runs of the year. I'm not sure what Chris Johans is up to next season or what uh, some of the other uh, some of the other drivers who are on off contract they're up to. Here's Brandon LaRoe in the 39. Several laps down in this. Go oh! Greg Woodard hooks the back of the 07 car of Anthony Griffith and puts Griffith into the inside wall. Have a look at that here. Griffith is all over the place. He is having a very rough night at all uh, uh, by uh, anyone's standards really and 
I don't think Woodard wa wanted to have anything to do with that 07 car getting in his way, and for some reason, no yellow flag. I don't quite know why, but, uh, well, Anthony Griffith's night is over, and there is a lot of damage to the back, uh, to the front and back of the factory Tenere driver. Here is Kevin Dwyer in car 8 trying to get by Tony Durbin in car 56. I'd like to point out that Kevin Dwyer is indeed not Matthias Tau. Um, as uh, Kevin Dwyer is uh, a little used to Taub driving those colors. As uh, Tony Durbin in that 56 car holding his line, doing everything he needs to do, uh, but Kevin Dwyer is not getting past him. Uh, anyways, here's Gaspar Souza who's worked his way up to third. Jacob Card is back there in fourth. What a return for Jacob Card. And a great run for Gaspar Souza. Here's fifth place, Chris Johans in car number 12. The American Launch Energy Racing Team missed the boost they needed. They're having an awful, awful season so far. And uh, they need a morale boost, and this is it, despite the fact that the rear end is um, Caddy Wampus, to put it lightly. Devereux looks like he's going to take fifth away from him, but this is still a fantastic showing uh, by those uh, rather under... Uh, rather underpowered sonic booms and there's uh, some reports that uh, the, the uh, that uh, the manufacturer Inglesby could be leaving the series after next year we don't quite know if there's any truth to that but we'll have to kind of um, wait and see on that as Chris Davenport makes a uh, not exactly making life easy for some of the leaders but I think Davenport's racing uh, some of the people right now Kuznetsov's there Kuznetsov's on the lead lap I believe and in that 15 car so I don't know what Davenport thinks he's doing here is um, Kakinen now in car number nine, still in eighth. He's now he's uh, gonna try to get around Durbin as Davenport eats the wall. I think uh, some people are gonna be relieved at that and uh, and or not surprised. Davina Henton is running in ninth in car number eleven. Uh, this is uh, one of Henton's better showings on an oval. She has not really uh, run terribly well on them in the past. Uh, her only oval win to date, I do believe, was a TM Lights race uh, in which uh, half the field wrecked out as Roderick puts another lap on Brandon LaRoe. And he's now chasing down Cameron Taylor, who is, uh, I think, really looking forward to uh, some of the upcoming tracks, especially the Ohio race, which will be Cameron Taylor's home event. And I don't think anyone is more excited about that race than he is. As Roderick now chases, uh, whoa, Chris Davenport is way, way off the pace in car number 84. As there's Tony Durbin about to lose a lap. As Kevin Dwyer in car number 8 looks like he is going to kick off a, a late round of pit stops here in this 8 car. And uh, we have uh, Greg Woodard coming into the pit lane along with the 37 of Tom Delgado. We've got just a handful of laps left to go on this one. Gaspar Souza pits on lap 92 in car number 60. Adrian Devereaux is in on lap 93. And it looks like Roderick is pitting on lap 94. Car number four is in. Looks like almost everyone else came in. But Arto Kekkonen, car number nine, last car to pit. Lap 96 is how long he kept it out. But as you're going to see here, we're looking at the race leader, and it's not Leonid Roderick. It is, in fact, the 60 car of Gaspar D'Souza, the KLTV Tremwell. D'Souza got his first series victory earlier in the year, and he's looking to add one of that. Kekkonen in car number nine stayed out, as you, can, as you can quite clearly tell, way too long, and he didn't exactly have the world's best pit stop either. But Black Diamond Racing has... Uh, really killed it on pit stops uh, throughout the course of the year. D'Souza a bit tentative behind uh, Webster Kekkonen really wanting to stay on the lead lap. Roderick beginning to show up in D'Souza's mirrors, however. We've got, uh, we've gone lap 99 of 111, so not, so D'Souza's gonna have to hold off Roderick. He doesn't have a whole lot of time to do that, and Roderick has a big head of steam coming in on D'Souza. And D'Souza finally gets around the lap car of Zach Webster, who's uh, done a pretty good job uh, so far tonight. Now, he's just got to put a lap on Kekkonen in car number nine without letting Roderick pass him. D'Souza, the Portuguese driver, hanging on tight. Uh, as now he slides a bit up, uh, up the racetrack. Roderick peeks his nose on the inside. D'Souza, is he going to let him go, or is he not going to have a choice? I don't think he's going to have too much of a choice here. Because Roderick has just gone by, 
No, not quite. He hasn't cleared D'Souza yet. Still side by side down the main straightaway. And Roderick finally clears the 60 car. And now they come up on Chris Davenport. Oh, Roderick, I don't think he wants to get that close to Davenport, who's having clearly a very loose car coming off of turn two. I don't think that's exactly what you want to have anyway, but uh, Roderick gaining a bit of ground on D'Souza as the battle for third is non-existent as Jacob Card in his return to the series has that more or less locked up uh, because uh, the nearest car to him is I do believe about 10 seconds behind him so uh, uh, Jacob Card rather is uh, enjoying a quite a sizable gap over um, Car in fourth position um, so uh, this has been a pretty good return for uh, Card and a pretty good race for Lennard International, at least his half of the garage. Uh, Luciano Sauber also had a bit of a disastrous night. Here is Chris Johans in car number 12. He and Adrian Devereaux are doing battle for position right here. This has been a fantastic showing for Chris Johans. He's kind of flown under the radar tonight. Here is Roderick now. Just two laps to go. And he's got this, looks like he's, uh, his gap on D'Souza is not extending, but um, uh, looks like uh, but it doesn't look like D'Souza is going to be able to get up to Roderick just at the moment. Uh, now they're coming down to take the white flag. This is going to be it. This is, D'Souza is going to have to have a bit of help here. And we got the white flag coming out. And we've got the lap cars of Tom Delgado and Tony Durbin in front of Roderick here. And we'll see if the lap traffic plays a, ha uh, plays a factor here. Delgado is uh, not paying attention to his mirror. Roderick lifts off the throttle. That's going to give just a little bit. Here comes D'Souza. Delgado in the 37. Oh, Delgado's loose coming in into 3 and 4. is going to have a run on him. Coming down the main straightaway. It's going to be a drag race to the finish. And D'Souza got him. Gaspar D'Souza got him. Oh, can you believe it? Roderick lost that one in the last probably 50 feet here. Del Delgado on the 37 slowed Roderick up because otherwise Roderick was going to crash in the back of him. Off the last corner, he had nowhere to go. Tony Durbin held his line like he's supposed to, but Tom Delgado basically just gave the win to Gaspar D'Souza in, if I am not mistaken, the closest finish in series history. Oh boy. Gaspar D'Souza and the Black Diamond Racing Team absolutely thrilled with this result. Oh, they stole this one quite clearly. Roderick got the points, the bonus points for getting the pole and leading the most laps. Less than, um, I do believe, a hundredth of a second away from a perfect 70. That is gut-wrenching, and Roderick did not really want to talk to anybody. Um, but I do believe he wanted to uh, give Tom Delgado a knuckle sandwich after this one. Uh, Jacob Card completed the podium. Kevin Dwyer... Uh, Kind of interrupted podium ceremonies after uh, a bit of gesturing towards Jacob Card, who he had an incident with earlier. Chris Johans rounded out the top five, and the alert team absolutely thrilled with that result. Kuznetsov from worst to, uh, well, not first, worst to seventh. Great result for Kuznetsov. Kakinen, Klavano, and Henton completed the top ten, and Klavano and Henton both had to come back from some rather severe adversity. Kingston, Woodard, Webster all um, uh, had good runs. Webster in particular. Uh, Ian Cooper in the 777 car uh, soldiered through a couple of crashes and some um, uh, self-inflicted smackings at the wall. Cameron Taylor, Tom Delgado, not exactly uh, going to be is not exactly going to be uh, the most popular person in the garage. Granted, I don't think he is anyway. Tony Durbin in his return has a credible run after a collision in the pit lane. And you may notice Brandon LaRoe rounds out the points. Well, LaRoe was 10 laps down and the last car running. And let's have a look at the Drivers' Championship. Adrian Devereaux is on top. Clavino, Rossini, Roderick, Savarol complete the top five. Scott Bates is still in it. Ashby in the 55 didn't, uh, didn't get any points. The Gessler boys are beginning to close in, as is D'Souza. The, um, uh, Davina Henson and Greg Woodard pad their points. Uh, which is what they needed to do. Ian Cooper in the triple seven gets us some extra points because Nyetsov is ahead of uh, his teammate in, uh, in the championship, and I do believe that's the first time uh, that's been the case all season long. So Kuznetsov really turning uh, his game around on track, and Lewis Kingston rounds out the top 20 in the TM Master Cup Series Drivers' Championship. One look at the Independence Trophy sees Archer Harris on top. So the Clayson Enterprises driver didn't finish the race but did enough to take the lead from Ryan Matthews. However, 
Uh, the season is not over yet, and I do believe Matthew still has a bullet in his gun still left. Uh, plus, uh, there's because, uh, of course, Matthew's qualified for the Cariola Grand Prix. The next time we'll see the TM Master Cup Series in action will be north of the border in Quebec in eastern Canada.